We're here with the Economic Development and Commerce Secretary, Leonard Lavoy. We're basically trying to get an update of what's going on, you know, uh, partly the redundancy with the economic sector. Um, how are businesses doing? What is the government doing for businesses during this crisis? Um, do you have any kind of special program happening? And what are you, what are you seeing you know, out there? Because there's so many businesses that are closed right now. Well, um, well, thank you very much for the opportunity uh, to communicate what's happening, not only on the business sector, but also uh, after the situation with the Hurricane uh, Maria. Uh, indeed, to put things in perspective, right now uh, the government's uh, priority is to save lives. It has to be the, the number one priority. Uh, and number two, uh, address uh, emergency situations that are still happening. On different uh, areas of the island, uh, there's still some municipalities that are having problems with interconnection, uh, accessing you know uh, different uh, communities, and so forth. So there is a lot of rescue. There's still emergency activities happening right now, even though you know Hurricane you know uh, passed uh, about you know a week and a half ago. So number one priority is uh, saving lives. Uh, number two, uh, we have two major, major uh, things that we're focused on. Number one, uh, basically uh, rebuilding the telecommunications system. You know, telecommunications is, is so basic uh, nowadays that it basically interrupts everything from the government's uh, efforts, you know, for emergency and, and recovery, even the federal government's, uh, you know, capability, you know, to, to basically deploy their, their operations. And of course, you know, business-wise and at the level of the individuals, it, it really impacts everything across sectors and, and across, across all areas. So telecommunications is very important at this point. Um, the last information that we have is that we are close to 35% of telecommunication uh, up. Uh, so that's still, you know, a very tough focus right now. And then the second one, it's uh, equally important, is the distribution of diesel and gasoline. We have to basically face the fact that Puerto Rico is going to be running on diesel for the next two to three months at least. Puerto Rico is not designed for that. Puerto Rico is a society that is designed that, like most, you know, other societies based on electricity. And we are an island. We're not interconnected by the other pieces of land. We are an island and we have our own grid. We're not interconnected with not anybody else. So after the hurricane, all transmission and distribution collapse. So now we have to run an economy. We have to run a country purely on diesel. And we've been telling all along that it's not a lack of, of uh, enough diesel. You know, diesel is coming, diesel is really, you know, available in, in the necessary quantities. The same thing with gasoline, same thing with cash, and same thing with food. The problem is not availability, the problem is distribution, getting those things into the public, into the sector, into the uh, private sector. And not only once, but also in a steady way. You know, we need to have a chain of supply that is based on continuity and, and on reliability. And we have to do that for three months. Okay, so now we have FEMA, we have the Corps of Engineers, and we have other uh, federal uh, entities working together with the government and the private sector, this is very important, with the private sector, to try to establish a system that works uh, reasonably and adequate based on, like I said, you know, a steady flow of, uh, of supply, including food, including diesel, including gasoline. And we have to do that a very reliable manner for the next three months. Is it moving already? Yes, I have to say that for the first couple of days, it was it was a lot of struggle because the impact was catastrophic. That's the truth. It has been impacting all sectors. And one important note is that before we have uh, experiences like George's or Ugo, which were really bad, but it impacted zones. In, you know, for example, Ugo in 1989, I believe, uh, impact it was devastating, but it impacted south, uh, sorry, uh, northeast, uh, you know, uh, region. You know, there could have been maybe 30 municipalities all devastated, but you still have the other side of the island to support that. Today, based on Maria's uh, impact, we're talking about all 78 municipalities. We're all crippled. One, you know, or you know, there were there has been some of them that are are really bad shape. Others not that bad, but overall, we basically have a whole country crippled. So that is the problem in terms of establishing a distribution system, a logistics that can support a whole island 
based on diesel when we don't have the infrastructure or the or the design for that. So how long is that gonna take? So for the last for the for the first couple of days, mm -hmm. it was this you know uh, challenge you know to understand you know the level of damage, understand the level of detail necessary to have this logistics in place. I have to say that for the last three days, a lot of progress has been made. Uh, again, it's a joint effort between the sector, the, the private sector, uh, the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico, and of course the federal government. I have to say that today we, re we feel pretty confident that we're going to be reaching a, a point where we have a steady uh, flow of these goods, particularly diesel, uh, within you know a period of a couple of weeks, you know, something like that. Now, that doesn't mean that things are not progressing on other fronts. Uh, you know, for example, right now, we have uh, a total of 1,100 uh, gas stations. We have close to 700, uh, probably 700 plus uh, gas stations that are operational. Uh, we have more than half of the supermarkets operational. Out of 450 supermarkets, we have uh, close to 300. Uh, pharmacies is way over 50%. I think we are in the 60% range uh, and so forth. The banks are more or less in the same statistics. Uh, we're making progress with water. You know, water right now overall is around you know 50 to 60 percent of all clients being served. Of course, there are some zones that are you know in better shape. Other zones are in a, in, a, in not that good. But overall, we all close to 60 percent. The problem is again telecommunications that you know fairly progress in the 30 percent uh, range. We believe that by next week we should be having coverage. Um, in around 80% of the island, and I talk about basic coverage, voice coverage. I'm not talking about, you know, uh, capacity for transmission or, or data. I'm talking about basic coverage so people can communicate. Um, so, the important thing is that the private sector it's working together with us. I'm talking about all sectors: industrial, uh, commercial, uh, small and medium uh, enterprises. Uh, you know, uh, talking about uh, hospitality, we're talking about the banking, finance, uh, healthcare, uh, you know, uh, manufacturing, uh, food distribution, food processing, agro, agro, agriculture. All of those sectors are being represented and we're meeting with them on a daily basis to establish, you know, and, and, and execute the plan for stabilization. Now, parallel to that, you know, we're also having conversations about what happens next. You know, recovery, reconstruction, and transformation is going to be key. You know, uh, a couple of uh, weeks uh, moving forward. Um, of course, you know, part of the equation, a very important part of the equation, is that you know, there's a lot of, there's going to be a lot of, of assistance uh, for the private sector, and it's going to be at two levels. It's going to be at the federal level, of course, and at the state level. Federal level, you know, we have. Uh, SBA right now, they're fully engaged, they're working hand by hand uh, with FEMA and actually they're here and they are uh, uh, basically uh, receiving all, all kinds of, uh, of, of companies, not only small and medium, applications but are they're receiving coming applications in, sure. coming in and they have a very aggressive relief plan, you know, that are tailor-made, tailor designed for emergency, you know, uh, interest in the 3% range, um, you know, repayment terms for 30 three years and so forth. So that is really good. And I think the important thing is to communicate that that, that relief program is in place. At the state level, we have a couple of incentives that we have designed that were designed actually not for Maria, were designed for Irma. And we're revisiting them because the extension of the impact is so big compared to Irma that we have to revisit those terms. We are right now meeting with all kinds of, of companies, you know, that we've been meeting with them over the last couple of days. And we're coupling with that with some other initiatives, you know, with the Economic Development Bank and actually, you know, with the SBA as well. So, so let me ask you something. All of these businesses that are closed right now because they don't have diesel, because they don't have electricity, because they don't have what they need to run, the concern is that they're closed and they'll remain closed. Have you heard that? And, and what have you, you know, thought about it that? It is. It is. Yes, we, we have been talking. We have been discussing this again within the state, within the same private sector, and with the federal government. There is a challenge. You know, it's how fast can we move to stabilize the situation? And again, I have to say, you know, with a lot of confidence that the last three days have been uh, really, really good in terms of progressing in the right direction. Nevertheless, we understand that there's a risk for certain companies in different sectors that may, they may not be in a position to, uh, you know, to, to basically endure uh, the, the crisis. Okay, so that is important. And probably the most vulnerable ones are small and medium enterprises. That is why it is important that they contact us 
uh, and also they get in touch with SBA because that's where you know where you know we can be in a position to address on a case by case the situation. Uh, number two, I think that once we stabilize the situation with the diesel uh, supply, and uh, I think that is going going to basically you know uh, represent a, 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 a relief of pressure for some of these companies you know that have been able you know to operate because of the lack of diesel. Uh, also, it's very important. You know, we have a curfew. Initially, the curfew was kind of strict because, you know, we had a catastrophe, and public safety was number one. Public safety is still number one, but we have been able to balance the interest of the public safety and the ability of the private sector to, you know, little by little, you know, you know, uh, up and running. So, so now the curfew has been flexibilized uh, to a point that we feel that the private sector is going to be in a position to little by little, you know, ramp up operations. So, uh, and of course. Uh, gasoline was a huge concern because the employees didn't have the gas you know the gasoline to go to work and so forth so there has been a lot of economic I'm uh, sorry um, executive orders signed by the governor you know to for example have gas stations operating 24 7, uh, 24 7 dedicated stations for employees uh, depending on the sector so there has been a number of, of actions that we've been taking to and actually and I'm very proud to say this a lot of these suggestions, a lot of these um, actions that the government has been uh, basically uh, put, uh, have been taken is be precisely because of the feedback from the private sector. Okay. You know, the private sector has been feeding us with a lot of information, with a lot of recommendations, and, and again, you know, most of the things that we're doing is because, you know, we're basically taking all those recommendations, evaluating them in the right context, and then put that into action. So we're very, very aware. We're, we're talking to the private sector on a daily basis, sometimes two, three times within the same day, because we know that there's a lot of challenges uh, ahead in terms of economic recovery. Let me ask you one thing. What's going on with the pharmaceutical sector? Because the FDA has issued a couple of statements um, expressing concern about the possible shortage of medications that are produced in Puerto Rico. Have you been able to talk directly to the pharmaceutical companies yes. about that? I've been talking since day one, actually even before Maria. Uh, we've been talking not only uh, to the top pharmaceutical companies in the island, but also through the Pharmaceutical Industry Association. We've been talking also to the medical device industry, we've been talking to the aerospace industry, we've been talking to the food processing industry. So what are, the, what are they saying? So in the case of the pharmaceutical uh -huh. industry, the, you know, there is a, a, a fact that Puerto Rico produces, you know, uh, some of the top you know, uh, medicines uh, in the world. So we, we represent a, a very important, uh, uh, you know, uh, we, we're very important for the global supply of some of the medicines, you know, that are, are you know, uh, distributed uh, you know, around the globe and specifically in the United States. The, the truth of the matter is that the pharmaceutical industry recognizes that we are in a stabilization period. Okay. Okay, they know that. Uh, as a matter of fact, you know, they were excluded from the curfew because pharmaceutical industry is part of, is considered part of the healthcare okay. top priority. So that was a very important, important step. Nevertheless, there's, there's concerns moving forward. So the concern is not necessarily very short term. I, when, I, when I mean short term, I'm talking about days or weeks. The concern is their ability, their capability to produce and manufacture and export, you know, their products, you know, to the global supply chain when, you know, uh, from a couple of weeks to months. Mm -hmm. That is, that's the real concern. Mm -hmm. Facility-wise, infrastructure-wise, the pharmaceutical industry was very well prepared. We only heard about maybe very specific situations that their impact was above average. Okay. Probably I only know of only two out of probably 50 to 60 facilities that we have in Puerto Rico. So that was really good, you know, that really talks about the resiliency of the industry in Puerto Rico, you know. But the truth is that in, in the next couple of weeks to a period of two to three months, that definitely Puerto Rico has to recover in a manner that will allow these pharmaceutical industries to manufacture and meet the demands of the global supply chain. As a matter of fact, when I talk to all these companies and the Pharmaceutical Industry Association, we encourage them to also deliver the message to the federal government at Washington, D.C. Yes, we've been receiving you know, assistance from FEMA, the Corps of Engineers, the Department of Defense, and other federal entities. Um, you know, we have probably more than 5,000, you know, uh, close to 10,000 
resources from the federal government right now in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. Help is it's it's being received and more help is on the way. But I don't think we have to be in a comfort zone. I no. think we have to mm -hmm. be more proactive. We need to keep you know uh, delivering the message uh, to Washington that say yes, thank you because you guys are being very very helpful in this situation. But this is a, a, a situation so catastrophic that if we don't recover over the next couple of months, it will be going to start impacting other things that people, you know, probably didn't have on the radar. And one of them being is, and, and, and you know, the FDA basically said it, you know, recently that if we don't recover, the global supply chain of certain uh, medicines is, is going to be impacted. And that's true. One last question. As the Secretary of Economic Development, have you been able to even assess the impact, the economic impact that the hurricane has had on the island, or is that not available yet? Well, we don't have uh, precise numbers yet. It, it is an ongoing effort, and it again is a joint effort with the federal government because the scope is so big that it has to be you know, a, a, a joint effort, uh, and again, also involving the private sector. There are some estimates okay. right now, you know, there are some conservative estimates that on the public side, uh, it could be between 10 to 20 billion okay. dollars. Because I spoke to Nicholas Crowley. And there's the more, uh -huh. there's an aggressive estimate that About it could 40 be billion. between 35 to 50 billion. Okay. So that's that's the range. And we're talking about only the private sector. Okay. I'm sorry, the public sector. Then you have to take into consideration the private sector. So overall, overall, it could be between you know thirty to seventy billion dollars. That's a huge range, though. That's a very I know, big I know, because we're still getting a lot of information. Uh, we're going to be able to have uh, a better number from the public sector in the next couple of days or weeks. And again, it's a joint effort, you know, between state and federal, uh, you know, uh, governments. But from the private side. It is very important, you know, to have you know the data from the private sector, and again, we're meeting on a daily basis, and that information is getting to us to have you know better estimates. Okay, um, I don't know if there's anything else that you want to say. I mean, people are very concerned about obviously, you know, not there's not enough commercial activity happening right now. Well, little by little, we are recovering. I, I cannot say that we are open for business, but I can assure you that we are on our way to be reopened for business soon. Um, I'll, I'll be very honest, you know, we energized, uh, you know, um, uh, the medical center in San Juan and in Mayagüez in record time. In less than a week, we, we energized those two medical centers. People thought that it was gonna take weeks, and we did it in one week. There are sectors, there's about more than 10 private hospitals that are running on electricity, not all, no longer on diesel. 35% of telecommunications after a little bit more than a week, it's up and running, 60% of water. So we are recovering, you know, again, you know, half, more than half of the supermarkets, more than half of the pharmacies. Although the lines, the lines are out the door because they're controlling the, the number of people that can of be course, in the store at the of same time. Of course, and, and again, you know, there's still a lot of challenges because we're still under an emergency period. But one of, one, my, the message is very clear, you know, there are same reasons why Puerto Rico was a, 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 a great place for investment and to visit are still here. We're just in recovery mode and I can assure you that we're going to use this uh, situation, this very sad situation, and turn it into an opportunity. We have to rebuild our infrastructure and that's going to be the key for our future. But the rest of the factors you know, that make Puerto Rico a great place for investment are still here. The talented people, aggressive incentives, we are under the U.S. flag. We have everything that we need you know, to recover and to be stronger in the future for investment and for tourism. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.